Hi, in this video we're going to look at um, large message support with Windows Azure Service Bus. This first video is intended to, sh to illustrate what the actual problem is with um, sending large messages. So to begin with, um, let's have a look and see our queue setup. So for the demos that I'm going to use alongside this article, I've got five queues set up. The one of the um, one of the sessions is going to talk about an option where we'll cache the message body to one side, and those two queues are for that demo. For this first demo, we're going to use the request queue here, which um, which contains a very basic queue. We haven't got any particular properties set on it here, and we've got a response queue, which is, um, if you notice, is enabled for requires session. And in this particular um, demo, we're going to do an RPC pattern. So we're going to send a request message to the request queue. It's going to be collected by a receiver, and it'll contain some details about the response queue we want to send a response back to. And the client that sent the original message is going to be polling the response queue to collect that response. If we have a quick look at the Visual Studio solution we have here, so we can see that we've got um, three projects. The shared messages project, the key thing here is that it contains this, this object or this class called very big data type. And I'm going to just populate that um, big value property with a string that will be used to control how big the message that we're going to send over service bus is. After that we have the client and we can see in the program class here the client's going to send a message to the request queue and it's going to re get a response in the response queue. For those of you who are fairly familiar with Service Bus, you'll recognize a lot of this code. So we have the message in factory. We're going to create a big string and we'll use the, the value here to specify how big it is. We'll then create our very big data type object and we're going to also create a session ID and a correlation ID. Then we're going to call into the send message method. And if we look down here, this is going to create a message sender. And it's going to serialize our object to, um, to create a stream, which will become the, the stream for the brokered message. We're going to then set the session ID, correlation ID, tell the message that it's of type JSON and we're going to set the reply to um, queue so the message comes back on the response queue and then we're going to send that message. After that we're going to um, we're going to use the receive response message and we're going to create a create a session receiver and that's going to just wait for that message using the session ID and then when we get the message back we'll deserialize it and just display it. On the receiver side, so this is going to going to start up and it's going to start polling on that um, queue, and it's going to receive a message, deserialize it. We're going to get grab the properties which tell us about how to send a response with a reply to, and the um, session ID and stuff, and then what we're going to do is. Um, and the, the input message is going to contain just the letter H repeated, you know, in this case a hundred thousand times. The response message is going to create, yeah, I'm going to include the letter I, and it's going to be however long the original input message was, it's going to send a response which is the same length. We're then going to um, serialize that message and send it back to the to the response queue. So let's take a quick look at this in action. So with the application started here, you can see on the left hand side we have the console for the client application, which is just waiting for me to press a key to a start. And on the um, on the sender on the receiver side, the one with the green text, it's waiting for a new message. So if we press um, press any key to start. So just before we we run the sample here, I've just amended the size of the message to 123 characters just to make it easy to illustrate this first test. And if we drag in the first console window which has the blue text which will simulate the client sending the message and secondly we bring in the green console which will be 
um, receiving the message. So if we click a button to start, and we can see that a message is sent, and the green window basically collected the message and displayed all of the H's, which were the message body, and then sent a response, and then waited for the next message. And very quickly, the client received the response message, which was all I's. And you can see, um, you know, that that was just nice and easy to implement. And you know that that's a standard RPC pattern. Now, the question is, what happens if we increase this message? Well, let's go up to one hundred thousand characters and let's run it again. And if we bring in the console window for the client and the sender, and this time if we click send, you can see. It's going to take a little bit longer to send the message, but it still sent it. And you can see the message body is much bigger there. And that still worked on both sides, and we managed to send a much bigger message through the queue. Now, at this point, we're a lot closer to that threshold of you know what, what the size limit is on service bus. So let's, let's try just add another zero on the end of there, and let's see if we can break this now. So if we bring the client in, and we bring the, so the again the client's the blue text, the receiver's the green text. And if we click send, this time we should see that we should get an error. And you can see here, if we have a look at the error, we've got a request from the client instance has exceeded the maximum message size for the underlying channel. So that illustrates the problem here, that when we, we get to a certain point with a message size, which for Azure Service Bus is 256k, we, we then hit this threshold and our message will no longer go onto the queue. So if we've got a bigger message, we need to come up with a way to work around that and see if we can flow a larger amount of data through queues. And that's what the rest of this, um, this article and the other videos are going to be about.